Derenka Per Noel. to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I was going to, this evening, just try British Christmas beer, but I come across this in the, <laughs> I come across it in the fridge, it's, it's like, oh, somebody put it there. I knew it was in the fridge, but I just came across this here and I, I couldn't remember, I've got a fridge full of beer in there, I just pulled this out and it said, exceptional Xmas beer and I just thought well I've got to try this so here I am trying the Duranka Pear Noel now I've tried quite a few Belgian Christmas beers and they've been really nice the Duranka brewery I have tried some of their stuff before what I have tried I think it was the double X bitter and the only reason I bought it was because I thought it was a take on a British bitter from a Belgian brewery how wrong I was it was basically a Belgian brewer who was putting big emphasis on the hops that they use. And they come from Flanders, and I think they're from the region where the hops are grown near Ypres. They're not too far, actually, from the, the sort of epicentre of Belgian hop growing. And they do make a big thing about it, and it's got, you know, Santa Claus hugging a hop there. Père Noël, what does that mean? It's unusual, I see a lot of this. I mean, they're from West Flanders, but they use the the French term in the title of the beer, and they're not the first ones to do it. I see a few of them using Noël, or the, you know, the French term for Christmas, which is Noël. I see a lot of Irish blokes called Noël. Usually they're born in December, and they're named after Christmas as well. But uh, this, Père Noël means in French, Father Christmas. Hence the reason you've got Father Christmas on the front. Now this brewery had been going since 1930, but they weren't a brewery in 1930. They used to make lemonade. And it wasn't until 1994 that they really started brewing properly. And they do quite a few beers now. And as I say, I've tried the bitter, the double X bitter. And from what I remember, it was okay. It wasn't outstanding. I was very disappointed that it wasn't actually a, a Belgian take on a British bitter, because that would have been really interesting. But it was okay. It just they just made a point about putting the hops in there and making it, you know, bitter. Speaking of bitterness, and I probably should have mentioned this in the next section, but I'm going to mention it now. The IBUs in this, the, that's the international bitter in units, are 50. Now that's really strong for a Christmas beer. These Christmas beers are usually very, or the Belgian beers are usually big on the, you know, the candy sugar, the malt, and they taste like you know, a cross between a double and a quad. The fact it's got 50 IBUs on this, that's a bit of an alarm bell for me. So let's stop gassing and let's see what's going on here. Right, 330ml bottle, 7%, exceptional Xmas beer. That's what I've called it. And the, as I said, the IBUs on this are 50, which is quite high. That's the sort of... IBUs you'd be expecting on American pale ales, some less bitter West Coast IPAs. But the thing you've got to remember about, about IBUs, it's all in context. So you have to take into consideration the beer that you're applying the IBUs to. So for example, if you had 50 IBU lager, that would be exceptionally bitter. But if you had a 50 IBU West Coast IPA, then that would be a relatively sweet West Coast IPA. So it's all about context when it comes to IBUs. You can't just judge a beer on the IBUs. You have to take into consideration the style, what is the expected norm on the style, etc. So what's giving it that? Well, they use two 
you know, they do make a big thing about the hops in their beer and they use two different types of hops. They use Brewer's Gold and they use Hallertau Mittelfruit. Now the Hallertau Mittelfruit, Hallertau is a, a noble hop, if you like, from the Hallertau region. And the Mittelfruit, as the name would suggest, it's quite fruity, but it's got some bitterness on there too. The Brewer's Gold, is a British hop and it has the characteristics of a bit British hop with the bitterness and the earthiness. But that all depends. I mean, there's, there's adjuncts put into Belgian beers, which, you know, you could put any sort of, you know, hop in there that you like and it would just be overcrowded by the adjuncts. So let's stop guessing and let's get this beer open. Right, cap is off. Quite a nice cap. Oh, I can smell the hops from here. That has got a bit of a hoppy note to it. Uh, there's the cap. Yeah, and Per Noel, as I mentioned, it is French for Father Christmas. I'm gonna put it into this glass. This is the nearest I've got. They, they sort of advocate putting this into a, a straight tulip glass, if you know what I mean. I don't have one of them. I'm gonna put it into a chalice because that's the safest bet with Belgian beers. You know, sometimes you could put it into a tulip glass and it just doesn't work. But if you, normally if you put them into chalices, it's a, it's a safe bet. It's gonna give you all the flavors and the aromas that you need to, you need to get. What are we got on the nose? Wow, there's not much of the sweetness, the candy sugar, and the malt that I'd be expecting from a Christmas beer. In fact, there's, the only thing I am getting is like a sour type ester from the yeast. There it is in the glass. Now, there is something called EBCs, whether you've heard of them or not. They are European beer colors. And this is 25, so you know if you wanna look that up, this is number 25, it's like a color scale. I don't know why they put that in there because, well, to be honest, does it really matter? That head, I'm just looking at the head, that has dis dissipated into nothing, which I'm not sure whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but normally with these high alcohol content beers, the, especially the Belgian ones in chalices, the head doesn't last for long. Maybe I should have put it into a tulip glass and chanced it, but here we are. Let's get it down the hatch. Mm. That's bitter. Now, there is some sweetness in this too, but I really don't know what they're trying to achieve with this. Carbonation is there, candy sugar is there, slight caramel malt, but that just goes all out the window with the finish because the finish is bitter. And I don't know whether this brewery are making it their aim to just brew bitter beers. Let me get a bit of a head going on that because that can you know, invigorate some of the flavor in this as well. Let me have another go. That does calm that that does calm down the the bitter finish on it, but it's still there, and I can definitely see where them fifty IBUs are coming from, and that really isn't what I'd expect from a Belgian beer. Not really getting the spirit alcohol or the ethanol on this. It's just all about that finish, that hop bitter 
finish on it. And I think what they've done is they've poured lots of hops into the initial boil and they've got that alpha acid out of all of them hops and it's just stayed in the beer and it's made it really bitter. And I do remember the double X bitter tasting like something like this as well. And I'm not sure whether I like it or not, to be honest. You do get the slightest hint of caramel malt and candy sugar, but then that just gives way to just waves and waves of hot bitterness. And I'm pretty sure that's what they've done. They've just boiled the crap out of a load of hops that they put in initially. They got all that alpha acid out of the hops and left it in there and it just, it just gives it such an astringent finish to it. And I don't think I like it. I, I don't get what they're trying to do. It's like, they're trying to be, I don't know, I, I really don't know. Is, is it their mission to make the bitterest tasting beer? Now some people like bitter tasting beer and I like it in context. You know, if there's some fruit on there, if it's a nice West Coast, then I'll get on with it. If there's a nice American pale ale with you know grapefruit bitterness on it and some pine notes and some fruit as well that balance it out a little bit but this hasn't got any real balance at all it's just very slight sugar candy sugar and caramel and then just waves and waves of bitterness I think I should really take a few more mouthfuls out of this because I could probably, after a few a few more mouthfuls, get used to that bitterness. But God, when you swirl that around, you do get that ethanol coming out of it now. God, that's quite big. But that bitterness just really puts me off. And it just lingers and lingers. Normally where you get the candy, the cloying candy sugar, you're not getting, you're not getting that at all. It's just bitterness, just clinging to the roof of your mouth. Uh, I can't, I, I just can't do it. I can't make excuses for it and pretend that I'm liking this because I'm really not enjoying it. That's a shame. So what's the verdict on the Père Noël from Derenka? When they said exceptional Xmas beer, they should have said exceptionally bitter Xmas beer. It's just too bitter for me. And I normally associate Christmas beers with big malt, Re relatively high alcohol and dark fruit. That's what, you know, I wouldn't say it's the standard, but it's it's what the Germans do, it's what the British do, and usually what the Belgians do. But I don't know, I just think it, they, as I said, you know, they've made it their mission to make the bitterest beer possible, and I don't like it. It's just too bitter. That finish just clings and clings and it's, it leaves an astringency that I don't like. Yet you do get vague hints of candy sugar and caramel malt on the initial mouth feel, on the initial mouthful, but no, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. This is gonna get a four out of 10. I can't recommend it because I don't like it. It's too bitter. If you're a fan of West Coasts and you want to try something different at Christmas, then you might like this. If you if you really do like your bitter style beers, and I don't mean British style bitters, I mean bitter tasting. Like West Coast IPAs, you know, you may like this, but it's not for me. So that is going to get a four out of 10. I'm not going to recommend it. And remember, I'm drinking this shit, so you don't have to.